What does it look like when someone has a eight figure per year income encounters Jesus for the very first time? In today's episode, I have a, the honor of sitting down with a friend of mine. We're gonna go through his transformation from new age style things that he's done, living his life, married, eight figure business, has all the things the world could ever desire to having an encounter with Jesus that shifted everything forever, where he's able to walk in freedom like never before, an acceleration where he's literally teaching the Bible 90 days in and how you can have that acceleration as well. Welcome to God's Business, where I interview the top Christian business owners, thought leaders, and influencers, where you can have not just a good business, but God's business, where he is the multiplier of your success, your family, your internal life, etc. Today, I get to bring in a great friend of mine that has produced multiple eight figures of revenue, has built an eight-figure business, has won plenty of rewards, built his dream home, and, and did a lot of these things that would be considered very good he had just recently encountered Jesus, and he's going to talk about his story, how it's affected his business, how it's multiplying his success inside of his life, and what did that encounter look like. Welcome my phenomenal friend, Mr. Ray Higdon. Ray, what's up, man? Welcome to the God's Business Podcast, and I am i just can't tell you how excited I am. You're literally an example of of someone to me that is running God's business, not just in the content that you've been putting out, which if anyone has known you for a long time, maybe the content wouldn't have been as forthcoming. And again, I everything we're about to talk about today, I don't know the story. I'm gonna literally mm -hmm. crack it open <clears throat> for the first nice. time for myself and, and give you a place as well where you know you don't have to hesitate or not, or even just beat around the bush with Jesus. Never would you hesitate because I've seen your content, yet maybe there's things you go, uh, this audience, it's not relevant to this business thing that I'm talking about right. here, man, it is relevant. Our guys are hungry to experience the power of God in their life. And so first off, I just appreciate you being here on the podcast. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So you've gone through this transformation. I'm, I'm very interested to hear because on my side, and this may be good for you from my side, man, it looks like, man, this guy was like a pastor at one point. And then all of a sudden now has just like come back to his roots. I mean, you're, you're on the phone. You're like, I was on your Instagram earlier. You're like quoting scripture. You've got like a, a group for people to even connect with. That is a faith driven group. That's like, Hey, this is what I'm learning from the Bible. Kind of walk me through like what's been going on the last couple of months. Am I accurate? Am I inaccurate with your transformation? Yeah. So, I mean, it was November 14th. So less than three months ago, um, I didn't grow up in the church. Um, I mean, I, I, there was a brief period after I, um, tried killing myself, uh, when I was 18 that I went to uh, church for maybe a few months with my aunt and uncle. Um, but, you know, since then, I've probably been in like attended a church three times, you know, in my, you yeah. know, 30 and, you know, 30, you know, plus years. And, um, <clears throat> and so it was, it was really uh, interesting. Um, you know, my, my wife, uh, who's, she's a, she's a realtor here in Naples, but she still gets hired to, you know, speak at different events. And she was speaking up in Nashville and she comes back. And she says, Hey, I met this guy. You need, you need to talk to this guy. And I'm like, you know, oh, okay. And so I get on a zoom with this guy and he says, like in two minutes, he says, I see a big vision for you and God. And I'm like, okay. You know, and you know, Hey, I mean, I, 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 I believed that there was a God. And I believe that there's something else. And I interchangeably used, you know, universe, source, God. And, um, and so, and I, and I, and, you know, previous to that, I mean, I did two years of one to three hours a day of meditation. So I've been I, searching. We, had, we did actually did a show when you were going through that transformation yeah. of meditation. Yeah. We did a show on how impactful that was for you. But even at this yeah. point, like you weren't yeah. connected to God in the way that you are now. Yeah. I mean, I mean, one of my main intentions, probably nine out of 10 times is my intention before entering meditation was to be closer to God. And I didn't even know what that meant. 
because I didn't, I hadn't cracked open a Bible, <laughs> you know, like I, I hadn't studied at all. And, and so I have this like hour long zoom with this guy and he's telling me, he goes, dude, I see you like, you know, pastoring all over the world. I see you like he, and he was, he had prophetic vision. And, and so he's saying all these things, which sound crazy to me and wild, but there's a piece of me that felt like they were true. And, and so, but I didn't really know what to do with it because I was like three weeks out from our, our event. And, you know, and I like had to focus because the event, as you know, is a large expense, large possible, you know, return. And so I, I got to like focus. I can't get all you know crazy here. Well, the next night uh, we go to a local networking meeting and I ran into this guy that I'd met him before. Didn't remember his name. Didn't remember what he did. And he sees me and he grabs my shoulder and he goes, I see a big vision for you and God. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and he's a pastor. And, and I forgot, I, I didn't remember his name or what he did and he was a pastor. And so here we are, we're praying in the middle of this, you know, group of networking, like it's very strange and I'm crying and I don't know why, but it feels true. And so it's, it's just really weird. And, and so one thing that, I, you know, I think the only thing with this journey that I regret is that I, that I did pump the brakes. I'm like, man, I got to focus on my event. I can't, I've literally... At that point, I had never, not one time of, you know, 15 years on stage, ever even used the word God, ever. And, and so, you know, I, I you know, or, or if I did, I said, you know, God, universe, you know, I, I just didn't make any kind of declaration. And so after we go, we do our event. And after the event, I meet with that uh, original guy and he, he baptizes uh, Jess and I in the Holy Spirit, uh, which I didn't know what that meant, you know, necessarily, but it just, it felt true. And then the next morning I, I felt different. You know, if you do two, if you do two years of one to three hours a day of meditation, you know, any fluctuation in your body. And I woke up and I'm just like, wow, man, I feel different. Like my DNA was different or something. And, and that next day I had a big realization and that realization was that I didn't trust God because unless you do specific work, your relationship with God is going to be very similar to your relationship with your biological father. And my biological father, I wasn't important to, I wasn't a priority, um, didn't care about me. Uh, I grew up in a very abusive home. Um, don't remember ever playing with him literally one time. And, um, and so that's how I viewed God. I viewed God as uncaring, as mean, as, you know, like I'm not, you know, who am I to, who am I to him? And so, you know, I just, I realized that and, and I apologized, you know, I just, I got on my, my knees and I apologized to God for not trusting him. He had, he had gotten me out of some wild situations, you know, like when I say I tried, you know, twice, I tried to kill myself as a teenager. And I mean, these weren't, these weren't attempts. I mean, I sat in a bathtub, I plugged in a toaster, I pushed it down, I threw it in the bathtub. Like, wow. I would think, I'm not an electrical engineer here, but I would, that's not a cry for help, right? That's like a, I'm going to electrocute myself and I'm going to yeah. not be here any longer. But nothing happened. And, um, and so since that day, I just have been, I've had, you know, just different nudges and I got the nudge that you need to be sharing your journey publicly. And so I've gone live six days a week, um, you know, for the last almost three months and uh, definitely got a lot of hate, you know, definitely had a lot of people not like it, a lot of uh, believers and non-believers, a lot of believers telling me I'm doing it wrong and wagging their finger at me. And, um, but I grew this, this hunger, this hunger for the word. I have a Bible mentor. I go to a Bible study tonight. I'm going to Bible study. I've found a church. Yep. Um, and so I'm just, just really hungry for, for this journey and I've learned a lot and, and it's, it's been really great. I, I had to write down things there. Cause I was like, all right, this is, this is too good. I don't want to bounce <laughs> around too much. Yeah. But I love the fact I I'd sent you a message even, I didn't know really why, but I knew that you had just gone through this fresh experience and straight into literally preaching what you were learning. You're documenting yeah. what you're saying. And I said, man, there was a guy just like, there was literally 12 disciples that followed Jesus plus people that followed him. 
And one of the guys that was demon possessed got delivered and Jesus said, go back into your town and tell everyone. And literally he just got sent straight into the field where he was just like preaching what Jesus did for him. And I, and I sent you that message on, on Facebook. Cause I was like, man, like that, that's an example. Like you do not, you do not qualify. Your time does not qualify. None of that right. stuff matters at all. Only God qualifies. David knew this, right? When he knew it wasn't his time to be King, he knew, Hey, when, when God wants me to be King, he's going to be the one who does it. I'm not going to be the one who does it. And, yeah. and, and, and that can happen the opposite too, which is he says, go and you did it. And yeah. yeah, all those people, man, I can't tell you, like, I, I, I'd never gone to church until 18, had a radical encounter. I was into all the occult stuff. So I was like mm, trying to talk wow. to demons every single night. Wow. Um, like, and was seeing supernatural, but I was, I see, saw there was a bigger realm out there, but I was still gripped with fear, insecurity, anxiety. That was, it's almost the exact opposite of the kingdom. The way that the demonic presence got stronger was through making us do obedient acts in fear. Wow. We were afraid and we still obeyed and then the presence would get stronger and obedience and faith is this like complete different realm shift, right? It's like obedience is a big deal and, and anything done apart from faith is a sin. So I just want to say first off that I think that that thing that you did was amazing. I would still love to hear a little bit about that, but you talked about something specific. You had already had this encounter where you're crying. I'm assuming at that point, did you accept Jesus where you're like, Hey, I accept Jesus to be my Lord or you did that later? No. And was, no, did, was that, that done later. when you did the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Was that the same night that you did, that you got saved at the same, same night? Yeah. So, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I said the words um, and not that I intentionally didn't or something, but I, but I like, I like, I kind of, you know, I, I said the words, but you know, the key is that, you know, God knows your heart and yep. there was still there was a piece of me that just didn't trust God. And, and it really wasn't until, um, until I did that, until I apologized to God. Um, you know, that's, that's really when I felt Holy spirit. That's when I started getting answers from Holy spirit. That's when I started getting wow. guided and nudged. And, um, and now, I mean, you know, it's, you know, that's been such a helper to me and such a, um, a powerful way to ask questions. And, and so it really was when my, when my heart really went there, not my words. And, and, and so for you, like, ah, there's such, so much goodness in here. I love, there was a quote from a mentor that, that, uh, had talked to me that miracles had happened in old Testament and miracles happen in new Testament. A lot of people say the Holy spirit, you now can see signs, wonders, and miracles do greater things than Jesus. But miracles happen before, even when Jesus walked in the earth in authority, and yet he died and was like, it's better that I go so that you would receive the Holy Spirit. How was that experience for you? And for some of the people that are listening, the reason I'm using the common language is just so everyone knows, like getting saved. Sure, there's probably like, like, when did you say, hey, Jesus, I believe that you died for me and I'm giving you my entire life, Lord of my life. That's a big deal. This baptism of the Holy Spirit, I didn't know about it at all either. I, I straight up get saved 18 years old, feel this heart transformation, but I still yeah. felt like I was mailing cards to God in the mail. When I pray, I only know how to pray yeah. in English. I went to a, a prayer group of 30 business guys six days after I, after I give my life to Jesus. And again, I come from this supernatural background, but now sure. I'm like, okay, what does God do? And I get in this room and literally 30 guys are praying in tongues. And yeah. I was like, and I was like, my friend was with me. My friend was religious. He was like, bro, this is so wrong. They're not allowed to do that. I just got saved. So I was like, bro, how do I get me something like that? I was like, yeah. oh man, this looks amazing. And it wasn't until a few weeks later, I locked a kid, not a locked kid, but a pastor's son. I said, can you just lock me in a room and I won't leave. I'll either die of starvation and dehydration, or I won't leave until this <laughs> happens for me. Cause I had that same kind of father wounds you're talking about. Like maybe yeah. he won't do it for me, but if I, if I twist his arm just right saying, Hey, I'm going to die and you can't use me for your kingdom unless you do this. So a little bit of junk junk in there and it changed my life. Like I was already had given my life to Jesus was going to prayers, yeah. reading every day, changed my life. And then this baptism of the Holy spirit experience was like a completely different experience 
what was that like for you? Yeah. So, so first just to explain a couple things there. So one, when, uh, when the covenant was broken and Adam and Eve, you know, sinned, that's when Holy spirit could no longer dwell in a body that was unholy. And, and so all throughout the old Testament, the Holy spirit would come upon people, but not inside of people. So it came upon Samson came upon Elijah, came upon all the, all the different miracles that the Holy spirit was coming upon. Um, when, you know, Jesus died and he said, someone greater than me is going to come and it's to your benefit for me to leave. That was, you know, he's talking about Holy spirit. And so now, uh, if you accept Jesus, you're, you know, you're now a, uh, an infrastructure, a, um, uh, you know, you're a body that the Holy spirit can embody. Um, and so, um, yeah, it was, it was incredible because like, I, I would like, like there were days, uh, I'll, I'll give you some heavy stuff here. I'll give you some heavy stuff that bro, give where, me, give me all the stuff, bro. I've already gone out on the limb spirit. for you. On so, this one, you know, so yeah, so I'll, I'll give you some heavy duty stuff here. Um, so, and I shared this, I did, um, you know, when I came out, right when I came out and, and shared my apology to God story, I know it's the worst term ever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I talked about my son and so my son is three years old and, um, <clears throat> for as long as we can remember, he would cough all the time at night. So at night he would just have these coughing fits and they were really bad. And it was very strange because he wouldn't cough during the day and, but he would just cough and we tried, you know, medicine, essential oils, you know, dehumidifiers and all kinds of different stuff, nothing. So when I had, I had, you know, uh, two prophets that, that came to the house and prophesied over me, uh, baptized me in the Holy Spirit, us in the Holy Spirit. And they also anointed the house, which I didn't know what that meant necessarily. But that night when I went to put uh, Graham down, my, my son, uh, he calls me back in and he goes, no son. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, it's dark and it's time for bed. And he, and he's looking around the room and he says, no son. And I said, and it, it took me a second. I'm like, buddy, do you normally see something in here? And he said, yeah. And I said, you don't see anything now? He goes, no. I'm like, okay, well, good night. For two weeks, he didn't cough. And, and like nothing, like he just slept the whole night, like it was very, you know, weird. And what I realized is, uh, and I, I believe all young children have this to some degree. I suspect he may have it to a higher degree, but have a spiritual vision. And he was seeing something unclean spirits, you, you know, souls. I, I don't know what he was seeing. I can't, I didn't see him. Um, and so I actually, because of that experience, I learned some spiritual warfare. I spent uh, time with three different deliverance pastors who've been doing this for decades and, you know, how to, you know, cast stuff out. And, um, you know, just the other night he, he's in our bed and he nudges me and he goes, he's by the door. And I said, he's by the door. And he's like, yeah. And I said, okay. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I bind and rebuke you. I cast you out. You are not welcome here. You, we are not under your jurisdiction. You have no jurisdiction here. Get out. And I said, is he gone? He goes, yeah. And he laid down. And, and so I've learned wow. some, you know, some wild stuff. And there was one night where he kept having the coughing fits and I'd had a deliverance pastor, you know, talk to me about, you know, tongues and, um, and I, you know, I was very nervous to do it. I was very like, this is so weird. And so I just opened my mouth and, and out it came. And what's interesting about that is I've since been nudged to pray for others. And there, there's a girl um, that I was helping and a client. And I got nudged, pray for her in tongues. And the reason you pray for someone in tongues is because uh, demons can't understand tongues, right? So if you, if, if, if you're actually, you know, you know, speaking English against someone and they have unclean spirits, you will be attacked because they can, they can find the location of, of the prayer, 
right? Because they can hear your congregation, they can hear your prayers, they can hear all that, but they don't understand tongues. So it's like a blind missile hitting them. Like they don't know what to do. And, and so, but I was nudged like, Hey, you need to pray for him. I'm like, okay, you need to record it. I'm like, I got to record it. <laughs> like I was prompted. I have to record this. And so I recorded this, you know, craziness and sent it to her. But as soon as I went to record it, my tongues totally changed. And, and it was, it was just a wild experience. And so, um, as far as any church that doesn't embrace it, that's anti-biblical because in first Corinthians, Paul tells us we need to eagerly desire the gifts of the spirit. Now in Ephesians, what they did there was actually not biblical, right? Um, because you should not be speaking tongues in front of non-believers. Um, that's a, that's a rule of tongues. There's four types of tongues. And, and so, but in, um, in first Corinthians, Paul is instructing the church Hey, he's pleading with them. He's saying, Hey, we need to eagerly desire the gifts of the spirit. So don't, don't stop teaching this stuff. And that's exactly what some churches have done. Yeah, dude. I, I love you sharing that. And it's just so cool to also hear, you know, your little guy, my son's three as well. And just to, he's kind of like your like little teammate there. He's like, he's there, he's yeah. identifying yeah. and you're like, all right, cool. Please. Let's Let's walk in this together, man. Like, let's get yeah. it. Maybe just take him with you, you know, strap him to your back and be like, yo, you see anything around here? Everything looking good? Well, He's like, no, dad, over here. Get him out. Tell, let me tell you, man. One thing that, I mean, it just, it, I mean, I cried later. He, one day, one morning, he comes into our bedroom. It was 4 a.m. He grabs the Bible and he points to the ceiling and says, get out. And we're like, wow, oh my God, like he's three years old. Like, this is crazy. And, and so like, it's, it's, it's been an experience for sure. It's been a while. Yeah. It's amazing. I would, I would love to hear the transition of the two. I know that sometimes when you have this experience, it's very easy to kind of lose kind of all desire for a lot of the other things that you've been doing in your life. First, I want to hit on that. You've still been super faithful in the business. Has anything changed in how you're doing business or what you're doing in your business or the vision of what you're doing in your business? And and to be said that God usually God always knows what he's doing. Do we see it? And a lot of times he's already kind of has you on the path and you didn't even know that you were supposed to be on that's like to accomplish what you're supposed to do. So I'm sure that's a piece of it. I don't want to negate that. And and for everyone listening, this is his personal testimony and story of his personal experiences. Same with me, not telling anyone else they have to do it the same way. It's personal. A That's why absolutely. I student directly. But for you, has anything changed? What's different? Yeah. I mean, um, so, you know, in uh, first Corinthians, Paul tells us that nothing you ever do for the Lord is useless. And so I see every single experience, good or bad that I've been through has prepared me for this day. And, and, and so I, you know, probably three days in, I just went and I said, God, I turn my business over to you. And, um, you tell me if you want me to close it down, I'll close it down. You want me to walk away? Wow. I'll walk away. You want me on the road in a robe? I'll do it. You tell me. And, wow. and, and so for a while there, I, I really wasn't sure. I'm like, you know, um, does he want me to like be a minister? Does he want me to go and pastor? Does he, what does he want me to do? And what I got through a series of nudges is that he wants, he wants me to do two things. Um, one, to bring more faith into the business world that I've already established and yeah. two, help weaponize people to have, uh, to understand authority and dominion, to understand the gifts of the spirit and to really weaponize people, um, you know, to be stronger because, you know, we're in a, we're in a world where, we should be, you know, you know, trampling the, the serpent, but we're not because most Christians don't know how powerful their dominion is. And so they allow themselves to be distracted easily. They allow themselves like, think about this. Christians are so divided, right? You know, if the pastor wears mm -hmm. a Gucci belt, it's like, oh, why are you a Gucci belt? you know, and so we're <laughs> so easily divided, but who's not divided is the enemy for thousands of years. He's been locking arms with all these different demons, all these unclean spirits, and they have absolutely no division. So imagine if you if you had any kind of sales team or you had any kind of, of army that had been in unison without any division for thousands of years, that's pretty strong. 
right? And yeah. so even though we have dominion, Genesis 126 and 128, we have dominion over everything that creepeth across the earth. Um, we don't know that. So if you're a foreign ambassador in wherever, is Uzbekistan, and you don't know your authority, then you're probably going to get killed, right? If you're a police officer and you're, you don't know that you have the authority to arrest someone or stop someone, then you're probably going to get killed. And so that's, you know, Christians are being just, you know, tossed left and right so easily and distracted so easily because they don't know their dominion. They don't know that, you know, what did God actually want us here on earth? And, and so uh, I know that that's part of my mission is to help people have more authority and dominion. And, and ever since connecting with a lot of these mentors, I love that you're connected underneath the leadership, whether it's at your church or I, it sounds like mentors are there. And, and I think that that's like phenomenal, right? A great example. And that's tough to find when you're pumped, when you're excited. Yeah. And the best thing these leaders told me, I was so excited, man. I was like, my life was changed. And they were just said, just don't let anyone just like put out the fire. Like everyone's going to try to control you yep. so much that they suck all the oxygen out of everything. And I had great people as well that just pushed me out, you know, just like, and it, it just shows like how much you've been accelerated too, the way that you're teaching and training. It, that's why I said, it's like, man, it was this guy like a pastor. He walked away from <laughs> God and then decided, Oh, I'm going to come back now. Like if anyone goes <laughs> and checks out Ray Higdon's content, you're going to see that's what it'll feel like. Uh, I do want to go back, but I kind of, I want to stay on this moment of, of how what's the focus now you're you're tell me how the company shifted has anything changed i know the messaging has you have a group now where you're dropping your daily wisdom you said six days a week that you're you're dropping stuff and sharing what you're learning from the bible yeah that's probably something new obviously has anything oh, yeah. shifted in the business model um you know i just really i just really believe that you probably heard the the different prophecies of the next move of god's going to be in the marketplace and yeah, and just sure. how God's going to use these business leaders, and yeah. I truly believe that as well. I mean, look at I'm I literally took my whole men's community and made it a Jesus centered, Holy yeah. Spirit covered, God multiplied message, and that was yeah. so scary. And it's just yeah, so much breakthrough has come since. So for you, what's changed in the business model, and and maybe break it down for some of the people that don't don't know exactly what you do. Yeah. So, I mean, we work, we, we work with sales teams to help them overcome their, their roadblocks and, and help them reach new levels. And so a lot of work with network marketing, a lot of work. Uh, recently, I've been doing a lot of work with real estate teams, with insurance teams, with franchises oh. um, and, but, but, you know, mainly, you know, teams. And so I went, once you teach biblically hard not to, Right. I mean, once you dig into like Solomon and once you dig into Proverbs, once you, you know, dig into some of the just just really juicy stuff, you know, Romans, uh, you know, seven and eight. When you dig into that juice, it's hard to just go back to, you know, just, you know, I, I don't know. I don't have an example, but um, it's hard to go back. And so I've just, you know, I've just been listening and, and I've been obedient and um I do a lot of speaking events. Uh, next weekend, I'm speaking up in um, Tampa, um, and they're a, a very faith-heavy uh, company, and they love the idea, um, you know, of me mixing scripture into my regular training. Uh, three weeks ago, I was speaking at an event that had booked me prior to all of this, and <laughs> and I'm up there, and I'm just like, I just I get the nudge to. I forget which one I was sharing. I think James 1, 5, and 8. If you lack in wisdom, ask for it. It'll be given liberally and without reproach, but you got to have faith, right? And, and so I was prompted to, to share that. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, I didn't have permission to do that. And, and I don't know if they're faith-based. And I came off and the CEO has one of the most amazing salvation stories I've ever heard. And he was so happy that I shared it. Wow. And so I've just been listening, you know, I've been listening. And, and so, um, you know, I, I'm, you know, pretty bold about it. I mean, it's all over my, my social media and, you know, some people have told me, Hey, I can't follow you anymore. I'm like, Hey, no judgment. I got you. I, I hear you rooting for you. Um, and, but a lot more people have been turned on. Not that that's the reason I'm doing it, but, um, <clears throat> I love it. And, and so I'm mixing it into literally everything that I do. I'm not making it. It's not like it's 
the sole focus except for my faith group. My faith group I've started, and that's obviously all faith. I keep it very specific there. Um, but in all of my other things, I'm mixing scripture in, you know? So like we run a six week um, boot camp, I guess, called Top Earner Success School. And every session I had, you know, one slide that was, you know, three to four different verses that I thought were pertinent and powerful. And so I'm just mixing it into everything that I'm, that I'm doing. And, uh, you know, and that, and that's, you know, that's a balance. Cause a lot of times I want to go like heavy, hardcore, you know, translation kind of stuff. And, but I got, I got to balance it of, okay, is this going to serve them? Cause I, I, you know, the number one rule of teaching is don't confuse. And so I got to keep yeah. it, you know, keep it to where it's easy to consume and, and, and so, but, but still bold in, in my faith. And the, the hearing part, the nudges, I'm very interested in. I know that I had talked to you right before we hit record about how these amazing people I'm interviewing, a lot of times people are just taking the fruit off the tree of what they're doing, but they're not connected to the vine. You know, people would see me run my men's community, but that was always prompted by the Holy Spirit. I came mm -hmm. out of missions and into business and wow. everything I did, I was like, I'm unequipped. I have no clue what to do. I failed for a long time. And and it was like always the focus, but I was like, hey, here's the outcome of me connecting with Jesus, overcoming these problems and insecurities. I was very insecure, very overweight, lots of issues. And so to get to that confidence wasn't become confident or get on video. It was like, man, I had to get uprooted. And I look at Brandon Kalen. Uh, we run a Bible study. We actually run it tonight. Yeah. I'm speaking on the faith part of it. Nice. And what they came up with lady boss that was a prayer what do we do what do we name change and they just boom lady boss they go okay nice. let's run with this brandon ged didn't you said ask for wisdom man he went to team meetings he was like this stuff would just spew out of me and he can take that and put it into a framework that anyone can follow but what they don't understand is what was the source in which he got it from right. and that's so interesting to me i know you did lots of meditation i'm sure that process serves you but how are you hearing from God, recognizing the nudges, I think that would be really amazing. Also, we know that when you tell the testimony, it also unlocks for other people the opportunity to enter sure. into your breakthrough. So I'd love to hear how are you hearing, getting the nudges, incorporating yeah. it in your work and daily life, et cetera. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I will, so I do, so when I, I, so when I wake up, I go through first thing I go through a list of prayers and it, it literally takes me six to seven minutes to read them. Right. So it's a pretty long list. Some Ephesians, Psalm 23, uh, the beginning of Psalm 116, um, some custom, you know, things. And, uh, it's, it's a pretty lengthy list. I read it every single, every single morning and I do a prayer and I always end with thank you for wisdom. So, you know, um, Mark eleven twenty four says, you know, when you pray, pray as if you've already received, right? And so, and there's other passages where it says, you know, pray in thanksgiving. And I think that's James mm -hmm. 1, 5, 8. And, and so I, and we have authority, right? We have dominion, right? And, and so when I pray, it's, Father, I come to you through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for wisdom around this topic. I want to thank you for this. And so I'm, that's how I roll. And then prayer is you speaking to God, meditation is you listening. And so if I have a specific thing that I want, I'll say, uh, thank you for the outcome. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. And then thank you for the wisdom on this topic. And then I'll shut up and listen. And so I've had a lot of amazing things that there's just no way I would have thought of. And so, um, I'll tell you, it led me to the hardest conversation I've ever had. And I've never shared this anywhere. Uh, I've actually, I've, I shared it with two clients before. Um, but yeah. that's, that's it. I've never I'm shared buckling it. Up, man. I'm buckling up. I'm, I'm being called to share on. it. So I was prompted for, you know, I don't remember the circumstance, but I was prompted to ask, what do I need to ask forgiveness of? And that's a very powerful question. And so I asked that question and boom, this thing came up from 13 years ago. 
it just popped up. I hadn't thought about it in a long time. And it was when my wife and I were dating and kind of a long story short, um, everyone was wasted and there was some improprietary stuff that went on. Okay. And, um, and the, it, was a, it was such a weird situation. That situation should have never happened, but it did. Uh, we were dating and that's been in the back of my mind for many years. And it's not like I think about it all the time, but it's, it's been in the back of my mind for many years. And so, but that's what I got. I need to ask for forgiveness for this. And so I'm like, okay. Um, so, you know, father, please, you know, please forgive me of that. And, you know, da -da. and so, and I, and I did feel better. I felt a little better. Two days later, it popped up in my head again. I'm like, wait a minute. And I got, and, and when I say nudge, cause it's not an audible thing. Sometimes I'll get an image. Sometimes I'll get a line. Sometimes it's, it's a couple lines. Sometimes it's a picture. Um, but it's, 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 it's like. What I've noticed is when I get something from the Holy Spirit, when I get a download from the Holy Spirit, I can't alter it. So if it's a, if I ask, if I say, thank you for wisdom around this, should I do this? And I get a yes, I can't mentally change it to a no. It stays a yes. Hmm. It's very different. And so, but two days later, I get the prompt, you need to tell your wife. I'm like, dude, she would never find it. I mean, it's been 13 years. This is before we were even married. Like this, like, yeah, this is a risky conversation. You're talking about millions of dollars in assets. You're talking about like, like, this is a risky conversation. What are you talking about? And so I, I prayed again, <laughs> I prayed again and I prayed like three or four times and it just kept coming up. And so I'm all right. And so I go to her and, and I said, Hey, I, you know, I got to tell you something. It's not easy to say, and uh, I'm sorry. And you know, I, you know, it would never happen. Nothing like this has ever happened since. And, you know, and, and I told her and, you know, she started crying. Um, you know, she didn't want to talk. I mean, it was, it, it was the toughest conversation I've ever had to have. Later that day, I was talking to her and I said, Hey, how you doing? Are you okay? Um, cause I don't know how she's going to react. And she said, she goes, you know, it probably sounds weird, but I trust you even more now. Yeah. And so that was one of the pieces i really see it as one of the pieces that went into the 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 engine that made us so much stronger now i i you know i'm i'm like on fire right i mean i'm just like you know a million miles an hour i'm reading i'm studying i got bible mentors i got pastors i'm eating with and, you know like i'm just a maniac because that's how yeah. i go right i'm all in kind of guy you know you are too and and so she wasn't, she was very logical. Her dad was an engineer or isn't it, or he used to, he's still alive, but he used to be an engineer. And so she's very logical, very analytical. Why do you have to die for sins? Like that makes no sense, you know? And so, you know, she's saying things that are incongruent with, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. what I know, but I don't want to correct her. I don't want to be that yeah. guy. I don't want to be the, you need to spend more time in the word. I don't want to be that guy. And so yeah. I turn it over to God and I say, God, I'm not, I'm not sure how to handle this. I want her on the same path. I want us to be locked arms wow. and I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't want to correct her. And I turn it over to God. That Sunday we go to, we try a new church. We go to this church and I'm standing up. She's, she's next to me and I feel her open up. I just feel her heart open up and I'm, I'm crying. I don't look over there and you know, I'm, I'm just crying. And, and we walk out of the sermon. It was such a good sermon. And I see women's Bible study and I thought, man, it'd be cool if she got in there and, but I'm not going to say anything. She gets in line and I'm like, oh, wow. And she turns and smacks right into one of her closest friends from high school that she's seen one time in the last, you know, whatever, 15 years. I couldn't have orchestrated that. I couldn't have said, Hey, be there at 1130 and get in line. You know, like I couldn't have made that happen. I didn't know this person. That was God. And so when you turn your problems over to God, when you cast your anxiety on him, when you're not anxious about anything and you turn it over to him, miracles show up. I've had complete strangers call me with answers to problems I gave to him 45 minutes earlier. 
complete strangers. I'm like, who is this again? And yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> and so it's wow. putting everything on him, man. It's turning it over and, and asking for guidance and trusting and having faith and, you know, and, and being obedient. I love the, the way that we started out with what the journey's like now. I think it'd be really cool. You know, we've done a few, we've done talks like this together. We've hung out together. We've yeah. done masterminds together, business events together. You've taught in my community with our men and, and now my community just going from billion dollar brotherhood, which now is just so hard to even think that that was the name <laughs> of my community to the, the Kings. Like, and, and, you know, it was really hard to have a, the, in your name. Yeah. And it was like, but this actually represents the authority that we're under. Cause it's not yeah. the Kings. Like that's who we are underneath the King of Kings authority. And, and now having that shift, it's just been so cool. And so for some of the people that maybe don't know you as well as me, and I'll probably learn a little bit too, because at the time I was just like, man, this guy has a lot of people on monthly subscriptions. Yeah, He's doing a lot of good stuff with that. There's some good personal development stuff in there, but I really didn't think too much about anything else besides that. What's really the difference in the two worlds? I think that this is just so interesting to me, like, difference of what you talked about you tried taking your life those two times can you kind of walk me through the key points of what describes what your life was like before this and then the leading up because there's like you're even talking about your crying but i don't remember you actually talking that much about that you were much of a crier but you've mentioned it like three or four times during the show <laughs> which is like quite a bit different yeah so in the best way possible that we just crack it open i'd love to hear kind of that backstory leading up to showing the differences of the, of the two race. I know for me, yeah, I, it was like, I had a different heart, man. Like I was like, my parents, though they didn't believe in Jesus were like, what is wrong with you? You are a completely different person. Yeah. What was yours like? Yeah. Um, so said a lot more time, bro. You like, I was 18. Like you've lived this <laughs> life a yeah. marriage. Yeah. Like uh, it's just, it's very impressive that this is such a huge shift for you, yeah. but you would have never really thought you were someone who was lacking much. Like you weren't really lacking. I mean, you, I, uh, you know, eight figure company, like I've seen like yeah. your numbers and all these things. You weren't lacking money. You're not lacking a wife. You're not lacking a kid. Right. Right. There wasn't like lack, you know what I mean? But at the same time there was, I'm sure we'll hear it. Yeah. And, and, and it reminds me of the, you know, the Tony Robbins quote, you know, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And, wow. you know, I had, um, you know, I remember, you know, my first million dollar year was 10 years ago, I think. Um, first million dollar month was the next year. First million dollar day was the next year. Um, had three million dollar days. And, and I would just go from goal to goal to goal to goal to goal. And I, and I would hit them but I didn't feel any different. I always felt like there was something missing. And, and so yeah. I've since learned that the term that I like the most around who I was, was an orphan spirit. And, mm. um, I was, I was, you know, looking to plug myself into something to make me feel whole, but nothing did it. So wow. even meditation, um, you know, making money, speaking on all these stages and, you know, all these different things, none of them, None of them filled the hole and, and it reminds me, and I see this all the time in, in business of someone who, you know, you think has everything, but they're still hustling and grinding to prove their worth. They're still hustling and grinding, but they still feel just as empty as they did when they were broke, maybe even more, because when you're broke, you can justify and say, you know what, if I had a bunch of money, I'd feel a lot better. But then when you get there and you're like, oh, wait a minute, I, I, I feel worse, actually. I'm no longer hungry because I got everything, but there's still something missing. And so it reminds me of, I saw an interview with, uh, um, when he was you know alive, uh, Kobe Bryant, they had just won the championship and, you know, he's on, he's on the, you know, the floor and people are kissing the trophy and they're making out and ticker tape and everything. And they're like, Kobe, you got to feel pretty good. You know? And he goes, I'm just ready for next year. And I'm like, Wow. <laughs> you know, like no celebration at all there, right? Just next goal. And that's that was me. You know, I'd never celebrated any really any of this these things, you know, from 
coming out of foreclosure, from child abuse, from, you know, drug addiction, from suicide attempts, you know, all these different things. And so I'll tell you, man, there's, um, when you feel that it's like, a it's like a warm honey of the Holy spirit, like, like really step up in you. Uh, it's moving. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how many times in the shower. I just, I just think about like my life and just think about how blessed I am and just, just how awesome this journey is. And, and, you know, and I, and there's, there are times I'll cry in the shower. Now I'm like a big wussy. There are times when a song will just trigger me, you know, in a, in a different way. And it's not a like, I'm sad. It's, it's a gratitude cry. It's a love cry. Yeah. It's a, oh my goodness, thank you for, for, you know, doing what you did, you know, um, you know, Hebrews 12, two for the joy set before me, he endured the, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, right? Just thinking about that, just thinking about what, you know, he went through to eradicate the broken covenant from, you know, from, from Adam and Eve so that we could experience this helper in us all the time, this comforter, this, this wise counselor. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's a little overwhelming of, wow, like life is just so different now. All of a sudden I didn't question all my friendships like I used to. All of a sudden I didn't need to, my wife to make me a priority because all of those are old wounds. All of those are childhood wounds. I don't need any of that stuff anymore. Those holes were filled. And I believe the only thing that can fill them is, is Jesus is, is accepting God into your life and, and really stepping in that direction. Uh, that's the only thing that did it for me. And I tried a lot of things. Yeah. And when you talked about even the feeling, I think I've gone through this in my experiences of even building a business, kind of just becoming hardened to everything. I was just so zealous for the thing. And yeah. I, I come from, like, I'm saying, like, I was doing this as a Christian, like I, I come out of ministry and I'm really just like, I know that God is calling me to this and I really had good intentions to go make it happen. But it's kind of like David when, when he was, when Saul was delivered to him and he decided not to kill him because he knew it wasn't his job to go and, and promote himself that he's waiting for God's promotion. And he could have quickened God's will. Like it was his will to become King, but he didn't quicken it. And I felt like mm. I was trying to quicken it. Like I'm going to sure. learn from these heathens or do this tactic or just work harder than pray. Like just like kind of doing it in what's working for the world. And as I did that, I noticed that it just became hard to, to notice those types of feelings, like that feeling of gratefulness and, and peace, like yeah. righteousness, peace, and joy. Two of those are, are what would be considered a feeling. Peace, you can't really like feel righteousness, right? It's like kind of an example, but peace and joy yeah. are both pretty feeling styles, right? Yeah. If you don't have feelings, oh, sure. then, then you're not able to, to hit those. I remember going to a men's event. This was just maybe two, a year and a half ago, maybe. And after those two days of just sitting in the presence, I started noticing that I went, when I went back to church on that Sunday, I was feeling something completely different. The gratitude, I was like, whoa, yeah. me being in this environment was almost like I was dry ground. And as I got water poured on me, I mm. kind of like wasn't so hard and cracked. I was more malleable again. Yeah. And that's what it reminded me of when you were talking about that. I just think that softened your heart, softened it. And again, yeah. I wasn't like in this place where you came radical transformation. Yeah. I was like radically transformed and just was trying to figure out my way. And I just didn't get it right the whole time. And now I'm realizing yeah. that which is why I'm yeah. doing what I'm doing now. And for your wife, I think this is very interesting. Kind of sounds like you had the transformation. I was going to ask that they say, and, and the reason why King's brotherhood even focused on men outside of the fact that I don't know what it's like to be a woman is that if a man has a transformation, there's about a 91% chance that the whole family follows suit. That the kids, yeah. the wife, they all, like, let's say oh, even yeah. salvation, same thing. For if a woman gets saved or a woman decides to get fit or any of these, just with the way that houses are built, it's just statistic. There's about an 18, 19% chance that the husband will follow suit. The kids mm. might, but the, the husband isn't going to do it. And the kids, it's a single digit. So, if it, like, for me, I got saved. Woohoo. There was, like, statistically, like, an 8% chance that. My whole family wow. follows you. Now I'm not following the statistic. That's so interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. And so for you, that's interesting. I know a lot of guys out there, they want that alignment with the spouse. 
what was that like? Was it you guys both had an experience at the same time? I know you said it was analytical, but how have you guys merged those two yeah. together and consolidated that in your marriage with such a big transformation? She's married to a different version of you that hopefully is what she would say. Is yeah. Better. Yeah. Um, you know, I, again, you know, nothing you ever do for the Lord is useless. So I studied, you know, masculine and feminine energy and, you know, a lot of guys get it wrong. They think that they're, you know, I sure wish my you know, wife would support me more in my dreams and my, no, no, you're the feminine energy is there to challenge the man and, and, and make him better. Wow. And, yep. but on the flip side, feminine energy can't trust masculine energy if you're not on purpose. So if you, if you don't have purpose, they don't feel secure. They can't trust you. Now, if you go to them with a plan, I got this idea, um, a good woman's going to try to shoot it down to make sure you're prepared for the world. Mm. People don't understand that. They think that, oh, she never supports my dream. No, no, no. Now, if she's bashing you publicly, that's a different story. But if she challenges you privately, that's her trying to make you better. And, and it took me most of my life to realize that because we would get in these fights. I'd be like, why don't you agree with this? And, and she don't even know she's doing it half the time. It's just a built in mechanism that, you know, that they have. And so I was not, you know, one, I'm going to be on purpose. Okay. I'm not going to wait for, you know, join arms and then I'll be on purpose. No, no, no. I'm on purpose. Right. I'm the leader. I'm the chief. I need to go forward. And so I'm going in this direction. I would love for you to as well. Um, but this is where I'm going. And that's very important for you to be on purpose to not say, well, I would if she no, 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 you need to yeah. go and be on purpose. And she needs to see, hey, he means business. He, he's serious. He's, he's going to do it this time. He's not just running his mouth like he did in the past. And so like you need to be on on purpose. And and then also just the I have a deep sensitivity to uh, church hurt. Right. A lot of people have been church hurt. A lot of people have been shamed or judged or, you know, lied to or, or whatever. And so I just I just knew, you know, we were at dinner one time and, and she was sharing some things that, you know, I would have been OK thinking prior to this. But I just knew it wasn't biblical. I knew it wasn't true. I, I didn't want to say anything. I'm not going to try and correct her. I'm not going to say, well, actually, you know, and so I, I you know, I, took it to the throne. Right. And I, and I just, you know, prayed on it. I turned, let me I'm turn this over to you. And so, you know, now like, you know, tonight, both of us will go to, you know, Bible study every Sunday, we both go to, you know, church, bring the kids. And, um, and so it's just been, it's just been awesome. And she blows me away. Cause you know, like we'll be in a Bible group and, and she'll say, you know, something I'll be like, wow. Right. And, and it just, it's just really, really cool, but you have to lead. You can't, it can't be like, okay, I'm going to go here. Now come along. No, you got to go here and you got to be, mar you got to be prepared to march all the way and her and not know if she's going to go. And that's going to greatly increase her confidence in you that you mean business and, and that she goes to. Yeah. It's interesting how that correlates is that if you were to shift because of your marriage, who's your God, then your marriage is more important than than the God that you're following. And, and I almost see that in business, right? It's like people have a very hard time that even in their messaging, they'll shift who they are for the company that they're in. Again, with respecting what environment you're in. And I'm not saying anything about that. So I'm not a pastor. So don't, don't hate on me for any of that. But like, you know, depending on the environment you're in, you want to be respectful. But if you're shifting who you are, doing things that you know are negative because of the fear of losing business, then it's like you have more fear of losing business than that genuine fear of God, which is the beginning of understanding well, and wisdom. And it's I mean, like, that's, Whoa. that's, yeah. I mean, that's perfectly, Crazy. that's the end of James 1, 5, 8 is if you doubt, don't even suspect that you'll get an answer because you're a double-minded man. Like it's very harsh Ooh. language and yeah. you're double-minded. You're like the waves on the sea. Like it's, it's a really strong verse. And, and you're right. You, you gotta, you gotta have the faith. I'm going to go do this. I have faith that I'm doing this, not, Hey, I'll do it. If you do it. That, but isn't it so that. funny that yeah. you talked about father wounds and all these things, 
And it's so true that a lot of times when people follow Jesus or think about God, even when I thought about introduced, like being like, hey, this is how I've been doing everything this whole time. People knew I was a Christian, but in the faith yeah. category, I was just like, this is what I do. You do what you want. But I noticed in building a man, if I'm not equipping them in the, what I say is the most important area and I'm only equipping them in the other areas, then it just doesn't make any sense. No. And when I really look at that, a lot of times I, I went and looked at per Christians as low performance. I looked at them as someone who didn't build great businesses, weren't very powerful, that they were having to like, they were always performing lower. So I was almost afraid that people were going to think, oh, when we slap God on it, make Jesus the focus, people are going to look at this as like a community of low performers. But when you look at Solomon or even yourself, it's not that we go, my marriage isn't as important, so I'm going to follow Jesus. And if they want to follow, they can. My business isn't as important. I'm going to put him above it. The point is like when Solomon didn't look at the gold, the silver, the leadership, the importance, any of those things, but he came, acknowledged what God did for his father before him, came in humility saying, I don't know. I don't even know how to come, go in or come out. I'm like a child, even though he was a freaking king. And everyone respected him, but just came with that humility. When God asked, he had an answer. He asked of something. It was based on the people he's meant to serve and the mission that God had put in his heart. And we just see that alignment, right? Of like, God goes, okay, well, everything's going to be added unto you. Look at uh, Abraham and Isaac. It's like speed of obedience and boom. It was like, okay, because you did that, you did the yeah. bigger thing. So because of that, I'm going to align your life. And I really think there's something to be said with that, with it's not like it takes away. It only takes away if you are in that double-minded state. How many people will say, man, I had faith. I really believed for that. Now I'm really upset at God because he didn't do it. Like, well, I don't know if faith would really fall in the category of something that could change from one small circumstance over a fart in the wind time frame that you believed yeah. it in, even for myself. You know, I'm like, man, did I really believe that? Like, I don't think I'd be questioning it now if I truly did. So all that to be said, I love just concluding what you said there absolutely phenomenal uh, mm. when it comes to the way that you're you're building everything now i know that we had talked about with your with your companies and everything and, and the messaging behind it first did you want to say anything based on what i just said because i'm sure that you yes. like the wheels turning okay <laughs> um two two quick things one uh genesis 128 says be fruitful and multiply and you know the layman hears that and things have babies right well, a fruit is the only thing with seeds on the inside and every single thing you've overcome, everything you've learned is a seed on your inside. And so by fruitful and multiply, it's to grow to the largest degree that you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And another phrase that, that really messes entrepreneurs up is, you know, easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter, you know, heaven. And, mm -hmm. but you got to read the whole verse. Okay. So the rich man comes to Jesus and says, you know, Hey, I followed all the 10 commandments. I've done this and that. And he says, he sees his heart and he says, go give away your possessions to the poor. All right. And he's like, Ooh, all right, I'm out. Right. And he skips town. And, uh, and that's when he says that. And the apostles are like, wait a minute. Well, well then, you know, who can possibly get in? And he said, with man, it's impossible with God, anything's possible. But then he continues and he says that anything that has been given up, uh, you know, for for me and for the kingdom will be returned a hundredfold in this life, not in heaven. And that's wow. a big mistake that people, they, they miss that, right? Because they think, oh, oh, in heaven, oh, yeah, I'll be sitting around with treasure chests and Scrooge McDuck in it and, you know, and, and harps and everything. And, you know, and yeah, it's like, yeah. no, no, no. He said a hundredfold in this life. Had that rich man gave away his possessions and, and followed Jesus and took that opportunity, he would have been returned a hundredfold in that life. And while he was living on earth. And so it's, it's something that there is no virtue in your poverty. There's no virtue in you not being influential. The devil wants you non-influential. The devil wants you broke. The devil wants you in bad health because then you can't get the word out. You're only so much, but think about this. If you become a billionaire, right? If you become a billionaire, guess, guess where you're going to, you know, guess where you're going to sit, right? You're going to sit with other billionaires and guess what they're, guess what's going to happen. Right. And, and Solomon talked about this. He said, um, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before Kings. He will not stand before unknown men. So if you're sitting across from other billionaires and you're the happy one, you're giving the most to charity, you're changing the most lives. They're going to say, 
how do you do this? And when we're asked, we're supposed to respond with gentleness and respect and say, I do it through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, man. And you don't think they'll listen to that? They're going to listen to that. But if you're broke, busted on the side of the road, there's no pop, there's no virtue there. You're not impacting anybody. You're not influencing anybody. And so it's just a mis, it's a mistranslation uh, of, of scripture. Uh, you got to do a little bit deeper dive. You got to ask Holy Spirit to help you translate some of this stuff. Yeah. And, and that's why even this, the show is really all around. We're called to run a business. Like that's, that's what I'm called to do. And all the yeah. guys that were reaching were like, this is, yeah. this is what's put into our hand. And we're meant to multiply. We're meant to grow it. And one thing that you said is that the respect that you get, if you enter in, in your realm, maybe you're an athlete, maybe yeah. you're in movies, maybe you're making money, maybe you're a missionary, whatever one, you're excellent in what you do. When I first came into this space, I remember beating like people that would be very influential in spaces like this and others. I don't want to just that their name doesn't really matter, but to me, they were the biggest deals. And I would share with them sometimes my testimony and what God had done for me. And no one ever cared. Like <laughs> nobody cared. Like I'm telling you, man, like I was if like, they were bigger I than must... you, you mean? Yeah. They just like, they really yeah. didn't, nothing I said really mattered. It felt like it always yeah. fell on deaf ears. And yeah. I was like, why is that? And, yeah. and now, now I'm about 10 years into business, but about seven years into actually doing something that would be moving forward and growing. Yeah. And, and now that I've shifted to King's Brotherhood, even it's a completely different experience. Nice. Like everyone is listening. People that awesome. I would have never thought I wrote them off. I said, they will leave the community. I wrote it on a document. I'm like they're going to leave. They're like, <laughs> Hey man, I think this is my entry to get to know God. And I'm like, dude, seven, eight, nine years ago, everyone, no one even listened to me. No one even would ever even have respected. So you talk about, you get this level awesome. of respect. I also had a guy yesterday. He's phenomenal business owner, but he goes, Oh, I don't want to be famous. You know, I don't, I'm not interested in any of that. Yeah. You know, Cause I was talking about coming on the podcast. It's like, well, you know, I've done all these great things, but I don't want to be out in the lim limelight. And I was like, man, I get the heart of that, but it just, it made me look internally. Where am I doing that? Where I'm kind of like having this. So, no, 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 no. But also at the same time, I remember reading, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your father that is in heaven. Amen. And that was the only reason I kept posting on social. I went through a season where I felt like I was posting just to teach other people, but I felt like I needed to do what I was saying. I was feeling very out of shape and I was telling mm. people, have a good mindset, go to the gym. I was like, I'm not really getting good workouts right now. Mm, and so I nice. decided I wasn't going to post anymore. I'm just going to work out. And I found this mi mi middle of just post after your workout. So you at least do it first and then you can talk about it. And that scripture came and I was like, oh, where's, where, where am I supposed to let my light shine before men? Like, right. so that they may see the good works that I'm doing, but for the purpose of glorifying him. Oh, you're a billionaire. Yeah. Bro, congrats. You're amazing. Oh, you want to hear how this whole thing happened? And just right. what you're saying with that, I just think it's <sighs> mic drop when it comes to multiplication. Um, yeah. When it comes to multiplication, what do you, how have you seen a difference in the way that you're working? You, we talked about this, that you've basically given up everything. You didn't, God didn't call you to shut down everything, but yeah. kind of, kind of like God didn't make Abraham go all the way to killing Isaac, right. but he had him on the altar and he knew that he was yeah. willing to do it. Yeah. You were there. How have you seen that difference in your family, your relationships, maybe your personal life, your own peace? and the business sense, how has God come back into those situations? Yeah. I mean, I get, I mean, especially when I, I, you know, did that initial video where I just broke down, you know, the apology to God and, and everything. Um, I mean, I'm just, I just get so many messages now of, of people. Like I, I just, I just had uh, someone who he's like, Hey man, I didn't grow up in the church, but I see what you're doing. I really like it. Um, like, like, where do I go next? And, and I just told him, I told him a really simple one, really simple one for someone that's never been in this space. I said, go watch the movie called show me the father and show me the father is on Amazon prime. I think you have to pay for it or something, but it's, it's on Amazon prime. And he messaged me back today and he goes, dude, that 
made so much sense to me. Wow. Everyone I've ever asked always made it too complicated. That made it so simple. And so that's one of my superpowers is I make things simple. And, and I'm like, like, what's the simplest way to move them closer to the goal? I'm not trying to wow. say, hey, study, uh, you know, Miles Monroe kingdom. Like that's, that's intense stuff, right? Like that's, that's heavy duty stuff. Like you gotta, you gotta kind of be on fire to even venture into there. But I'm like, watch this movie, you know, watch, watch a case for heaven. Watch, watch a case for Christ. Watch, watch. And so I'll, I'll make these little suggestions and move them closer, you know, you know, to God. And those messages are just so meaningful. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, hell, I've cried on the treadmill just because that's where I listen to messages. So um, I go through all my messages on, on the treadmill every morning, like, you know, five in the morning. And, uh, and so like, it just hearing these heartfelt messages of, of people that have given up hope on their kids or given up hope on God and, and now are, you know, or were church heard. And, and now because of, of me, you know, shining my light and, uh, being obedient, um, that they're coming back to God, that they're going back to church, that they turn back to the Bible, that they've given it another chance. And, and so it's just, there's just so much more meaning as far as my, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because now all of my coaching groups that I, that I manage and, and do like, you know, group coaching, um, they're all, they're all of faith. <laughs> it's, it's just interesting as I had a lot of people of faith positioned all around me that never pressured me, that never judged me or shamed me and just kind of, you know, they prayed for me, you know, without me knowing. And, um, and so I kind of popped my head up and I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, wow. And, and it's just, it's just been really cool. And, and so that is being obedient, having faith, and, and I was, you know, I was prepared to do it no matter what happened. And it just so happens that it's actually grown the business. It's grown my, um, you know, I mean, my, my posts on my Facebook profile went from like, you know, two to 300 likes to, you know, three, five, 9,000 likes. And that's just on my profile, not my page with no ads. And so it's, it's been really wild, the reaction to, you know, from my audience at least. Yeah. And it's wild that you already kind of track that when I, for me, I was a Christian walking in faith with my wife, running a business that didn't, didn't make that a, a necessity for you to really get developed or, yeah. or the core focus. Then when I did, I thought everyone was going to leave and they were all like, oh, finally, because I had already been attracting those people. But even for you, you were, yeah. you had this, you, uh, even network marketing in general, since that's a huge influence, you guys have crushed it. Yeah. And and I would say that's a huge faith-based community. Like it's a most definitely more than not. Based. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely more than not. So it's just interesting to see that that was your journey. Uh, for for the guys that are here, I know that you have your your company. You also have this this new thing that you're doing with these like daily messages. What's the best way they can get connected to this new stuff that you're doing, as well as some of the other things as well? And then after that, I would love for you to just pray over the community that the fire that you've experienced, that we'd have a renewing or a first encounter with what you've had. That'd be amazing. Yeah, man. Awesome. So, yeah. So, I mean, if you want to uh, catch my, my, you know, six day a week, you know, lives um, on faith, um, my Facebook uh, group, it's free, uh, higdengroup.com forward slash faith. Uh, if you want to see my, my original, you know, testimony, that's at that's on YouTube at higdengroup.com forward slash apology. And then if you want to check out my other stuff, just you know, Ray Higdon, I'm on most of the social media places. Sweet. And, so, and is it the uh the Higdon group inner circle? Is that the is this the one or is is that the Facebook group or is this different? No, Higdon Group. Oh, the URL to get to the Facebook group is higdengroup.com forward slash faith. And that'll take you to the faith Facebook group. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah. I'm just joining too. So I'm like, yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. And so, oh. um, so yeah, so. All right. How did I Thank join? You. I'm jo I jo the main man himself, man. I'm yeah. I found you. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I appreciate it. And then yes, yeah. please. Yeah. I, I always pick up on something from everyone. I'm really, yeah. I really think it's a big deal. And, and if you could just release that, that, freshness of just that relationship yeah. and that fire and that enthusiasm. Yeah. I would love that for everyone and myself. Let's do it. Thank you for filling me, Holy Spirit.
Thank you for speaking through me. Father, I come to you through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for placing the listeners of this podcast into your high favor. I want to thank you for blessing them with unexpected blessings and unexpected miracles. I want to thank you for grace and mercy, forgiveness and healing of everyone that's listening to this right now. I want to thank you for lighting our path. I want to thank you for clarity, for guidance, for direction, for wisdom. Thank you for putting us in the right rooms. Thank you for putting us in front of the right people. And thank you for always having us place your glory above our own glory. All of this I ask in the name of, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much again, man. Yeah, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. <laughs>